Uh, this is the 2020 Solid Mechanics and FEA exam, question three, and um, it's a question about thermal expansion, really. Uh, what's happening is this is the setup at room temperature, and then everything gets warmer. These two walls here are fixed. These two rods expand, and as they expand, uh, they're going to... Um, end up colliding with each other and so that collision is going or they'll, they'll touch each other and then they'll keep expanding and that expansion is going to lead to some stresses and things like that. So let's just see if we can work through what happens here. It's probably a good idea to take a screenshot of the question uh, if you don't already have it. Okay, uh, sorry, that's leftover bit of question paper. Question three, part one, and um, what we've got is this. Uh, this is 0 0.3 meters. This is 0 0.25 meters. The gap is 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. So obviously everything's not drawn to scale here. The gap is really very small, but that's fine. Uh, just make sure that's visible. Um, see if I can get it to focus. Sorry about this. Trying to improve my camera setup sometime. Um, okay. So the things we know, this is aluminium and this is stainless steel. And for the aluminium, we know um, A equals 2000 square millimeters. Um, one square millimeter, just remember this is 10 to the minus six square meters. One millimeter is 10 to the minus three meters and you square everything. So you square the 10 to the minus three and you get 10 to the minus six. So this equals uh, two times 10 to the minus three square meters, I think. If I just do uh, 2000 times 10 to the minus six, I get two times 10 to the minus three. So that's fine. And we've also got Young's modulus is 75 gigapascals. And the thermal expansion coefficient is 23 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, strain per degree C or per Kelvin. Uh, same thing for stainless steel. We've got uh, area is 800 square millimeters, which equals 8 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Young's modulus is... Uh, 190 gigapascals and um, thermal expansion coefficient is 17.3 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. Um, temperature 1 is 20 degrees C temperature 2 is 140 degrees C uh, and so the total temperature difference delta T is 120 degrees C. Okay, so in general with um, questions like this, we might have, first of all, a load condition. I will say this is a tricky question. I'm going to need to <laughs> think quite hard about it as I'm working through it. So we'll have a load condition, and that's going to say once the these two bars, sorry, I know you can't see, but once the two um, bars contact each other, the um, force in the uh, aluminium must equal the force in the stainless steel. I'm just thinking about that a bit because I want to make sure I'm not doing something 
uh, problematic with signs. Um, both of them will be in compression once they're pushing against each other um, and so as long as I consider that compression is positive I think I'll be all right here. So the amount of compression in the aluminium must equal the amount of compression in the stainless steel. Um, the change now we need um, a compatibility condition and if we assume um, that they're in contact then the change in length delta x of the aluminium where delta x is a is an, a lengthening an extension plus the change in length delta x of the stainless steel must equal 5 times 10 to the minus 4 millimeters that is however much they both grow they can only grow to take up the gap um, and then if one of them grows the other one must shrink uh, sorry that's 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters um, okay I'm gonna try working from here and see where I get to uh, first of all I'll use that strain is change in length divided by original length so delta x is uh, strain times x the original length and that means the strain in the aluminium um, multiplied by the original length of the aluminium plus the strain in the stainless steel multiplied by the original length of the stainless steel is going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Okay well that's a start. Um, next I guess I can say that um, strain is uh, stress divided by Young's modulus so rewriting that equation I had above I'll have stress in the aluminium divided by Young's modulus in the aluminium um, multiplied by the original length of the aluminium plus stress in the alu in the stainless steel divided by Young's modulus in the stainless steel multiplied by the original length of the stainless steel is 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters um, okay I can keep on going by using stress is force divided by area which means uh, the force in the aluminium multiplied by I'm going to start putting all of the things we know in brackets so the original length of the aluminium divided by Young's modulus the aluminium um, ah, I've just realized this here everything that I've written on this sheet is wrong because that is a definition of mechanical strain but I'm actually going to have to use um, thermal strain as well so the total strain uh, let's forget everything I wrote on this sheet um, and we'll go back to this equation here which I still think is correct it, it talks about the total how the total strain must work. Now I'm going to say total strain, sorry I just realized I was going to need to think about thermal strain somewhere. Total strain equals mechanical strain plus thermal strain uh, which equals sigma on E plus alpha delta T so now I can say 
sigma al on e al plus alpha al delta t multiplied by x al plus sigma stainless steel on Young's modulus stainless steel plus alpha stainless steel delta t multiplied by the original length of the um, stainless steel is going to equal 5 times 10 to the minus 4. That seems okay. The good news is we know almost all of these things. Uh, we know E, alpha, delta t and x in both cases. So the only things that we don't know are sigma al and sigma ss. But if I go back to my load condition, uh, I'll just do this in a different color. Again, there are different ways to work through this. I could go forward from this line, but instead I'm going to jump back to my load condition uh, and get something that I can substitute in for stresses out of that. We know the force in the aluminium is the force in the stainless steel. They must balance each other out, otherwise something would have to move sideways. Um, which means uh, force is stress over area, so sigma AL over area AL must equal sigma stainless steel over area stainless steel, which means that the stress in the aluminium is... I'm just going to do this the other way around because we're actually asked for the stress in the aluminium, which means I want to substitute out the stress in the stainless steel. So I'm going to say the stress in the stainless steel is the stress in the aluminium multiplied by the area of the stainless steel divided by the area of the aluminium. Uh, and now I can put that back in here, which there's a few terms in here. Stress in aluminium is fine. I can leave that because I want that to be my answer. That's the unknown that I'm looking for. Um, and I'm going to multiply that bracket out. Plus alpha AL delta T X AL plus. Now I'm going to substitute this out. Sigma AL A stainless steel the original length of the stainless steel divided by A aluminium uh, Young's modulus stainless steel. So that's taking this term multiplied by this term and substituting in this expression for um, sigma AL plus alpha stainless steel delta T X stainless steel is 5 times 10 to the minus 4. At this stage it's easy to lose confidence. I'm starting to lose some confidence but um, I guess at least now what I can do is write down um, sigma AL multiplied by X aluminium over E aluminium plus X stainless steel over E stainless steel area of the stainless steel divided by area of the aluminium, that's this term, equals 5 times 10 to the minus 4 minus, I'm concerned I may have some signs the wrong way around, um, but I'll keep going and come back and think about that if uh, if it comes to it. Uh, minus alpha aluminium delta T X aluminium minus alpha stainless steel delta T X stainless steel.
So I guess maybe we can think about this. This is these terms are all kind of strains and this is the total amount of mechanical squeezing that goes on in the um, two rods combined. This is the gap that already existed and these are the total amount of thermal expansions. So I think just going back it would make more sense to make the this term should be negative this is a squeezing this is an expansion and this term here is just thinking about the sine of the 5 times 10 to the minus 4 then uh, that 5 times 10 to the minus 4 is effectively an expansion because it's the amount that things can grow without having to do any squeezing is that right if that gap no that's not right what it should be is the total amount of mechanical squeezing plus the original gap and these are all now distances so the the gap plus the amount that things have been squashed must be must accommodate the total amount things want to expand um, due to to thermal expansion I think that's now right actually so if I make uh, I need to make this term here negative that that'll work yeah so I am right that if I make this term here negative I'll do it in green just so it's clear I'm uh, restarting a number of ideas here these um, mechanical terms should be negative there um, which means this term is negative and this term is negative and then that term becomes negative and then what we've got is um, this plus this equals this plus this sorry uh, make that clear this plus this the amount that things are squeezed plus the original gap equals the amount that things needed to expand and that makes some kind of intuitive sense to me so uh, like I say a uh, tricky question um, anyway now I think I can put all the numbers in on this so that's what I'm going to try and do and see where I get to so negative um, um, stress in the aluminium multiplied by the length of the aluminium is 0 0.3 divided by Young's modulus which is 75 times 10 to the 9 plus uh, the length of the stainless steel which is 0 0.25 divided by uh, the Young's modulus which is 190 times 10 to the 9 uh, multiplied by the area of the stainless steel which we said is 8 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by the area of the um, aluminium which is 2 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 5 times 10 to the minus 4 minus alpha aluminium 23 times 10 to the minus 6 delta T which is 120 length of the aluminium uh, which is 0 0.3 minus uh, I'm going to have to go on to another line minus 17.3 times 10 to the minus 6 120 um, and the length of the stainless steel is 0 0.25 
OK, let's put some of this into a calculator and see where we get to. Uh, I'll start with this term. Sorry, out to focus. Um, so 0 0.25, 0 0.25 divided by 190 times 10 to the 9 times 8 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 3 it's a pretty small number plus 0 0.3 divided by 75 times 10 to the 9 so sigma al times 4.5 to 6 times 10 to the minus 12 equals but that's okay because I'm expecting Sigma will be a stress you know maybe in megapascals so when I multiply megapascals by that kind of number I'll get something that's comparable to 5 times 10 to the minus 4 maybe so I'm not too worried about the fact this is a small number okay 5 times 10 to the minus 4 minus uh, 23 times 10 to the minus 6 times 120 times 0 0.3 uh, 8.28 times 10 to the minus 4 minus five point nine times 10 to the minus 4 equals minus 8.47 times 10 to the minus 4. The stress in the aluminium equals 8.47 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm cancelling out that minus sign and that minus sign divided by 4.526 times 10 to the minus 12 And that comes out for me to be 187 megapascals. Uh, if I'm reading my calculator right, which I think I am. Um, okay, so that is part A answered. That's the normal stress in the aluminium. And the change in length, well now this is... Um, Hmm. <laughs> um, I guess we can use this formula. It's minus the mechanical strain plus uh, for total strain, and then that'll get us change in length. So epsilon total is minus one eight seven times ten to the six divided by Young's modulus for the aluminium, which is 75 times 10 to the 9, plus alpha delta T, uh, which equals Just get it right on my calculator. Uh, Two point six six times or six seven, I suppose, times ten to the minus four. And what it actually wants is a change in length. The good news is that sounds like a strain. That sounds like a stress. This is quite high for aluminium, but. Um, I'm not convinced I would um, want to go back through this question and check all my working. Uh, so th that's a strain. And then finally, to turn that into a stress, uh, into a change in length, uh, the change in length is 
epsilon times the original length which is 2.67 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by um, uh, 0.3 meters which equals 8 times 10 to the minus 5 meters which equals 0 0.08 millimeters uh, and that's my answer and I guess one thing that I could do to check it's been a long question so I'm uh, I'm gonna stop here but you could always go back and check the equivalent values for the stainless steel um, and if the stain we expect the stainless steel should give us an expansion of 0 0.42 millimeters and then that adds up to the total of 0 0.5 uh, millimeters which is what we need and again I kind of believe this answer it doesn't seem wildly out because I know that the stainless steel has a much higher um, Young's modulus and that probably means that the stainless steel is going to do um, it's a stronger material so it may well end up taking up more of the um, gap kind of pushing the aluminium out the way uh, that said the stainless steel has a smaller area which should counteract that um, hard to know I'm now starting to doubt this answer I think it should be closer to 0 0.25 millimeters um, so that it's yeah, an equal space of the gap but um, I think it would take a long time to go back and check the answer so I'm gonna say that's the kind of method you could use for this question and leave it there